We've already mentioned briefly that some problems, like kidney donor matching, have the amazing property that they're as hard as any problem in NP. In other words, for any problem A in NP, solving A can be reduced to solving kidney donor matching. In particular, this means that if any problem in NP is difficult, then so is kidney donor matching. Or more precisely, if P is not equal to NP, then kidney donor matching can't be solved in polynomial time. How is this possible? How can one problem express every other problem in NP? Essentially, because that problem can be used to build a computer. So let's see how this works. For the purposes of understanding this phenomenon, computers are built from three basic Boolean logic gates called AND, OR, and NOT. The AND gate takes two inputs, X and Y, and outputs X and Y, denoted with this upside down V. And it, what this means is it, the output is true exactly when both of the inputs are true, when X and Y are true. The OR gate takes two inputs X and Y and outputs X or Y denoted with a V, meaning the output of the OR gate is true exactly when either X or Y is true or both of them. This is not an exclusive OR, this is a permissive OR. And a NOT gate which simply negates its inputs. If the input is true, the output is false and vice versa. The first NP-complete problem, or the simplest to see that it's NP-complete, is based on Boolean circuits. Because any program that tests solutions can be compiled into a Boolean circuit. And remember, having a program that tests solutions is the definition of NP. So you have some problem in NP, meaning there's a polynomial time algorithm that can verify a potential answer to the problem. You take that polynomial time algorithm and you compile it into a Boolean circuit. This circuit has the property that it outputs true if and only if the input to the circuit is a valid solution to the original problem. The circuit sat problem, circuit satisfiability, is the question of given a Boolean circuit, are there input values that make the output true? And so we see that circuit sat is NP complete. To prove this, we need to prove two things. First, that it's in NP, and second, that any problem in NP can be reduced to it. To see that it's in NP, notice that if I give you a potential input that makes the output true, it's very easy to check that the output is true. You simply simulate the circuit. So circuit sat is certainly in NP, uh, and we've already given the proof that any problem in NP can be reduced to it, so circuit sat is NP complete. But this is obviously not the most interesting NP complete problem. There are many other problems that are NP complete, in fact, thousands of them, including kidney donor matching. But here's another one that may seem less obvious than circuit sat, and yet slightly more obvious than kidney donor matching. The question is I give you a shape built out of straight lines at right angles, and I ask, can it be tiled with these two tiles? Meaning, is there a way to place these two tiles in the shape so that the shape is entirely covered and no tile goes outside of the shape and no two tiles overlap? The idea of showing that this is NP-complete is that we can use these shapes to build a tiling computer. For example, we can simulate an AND gate by using the shape you see here. What you see here is we're treating the upper two ends of this shape as the inputs to a gate and the bottom end as the output. Although we're thinking of the upper two as the input and the bottom as the output, we have to remember that the problem itself is just a question of tiling. The problem doesn't know anything about inputs and outputs. And we'll use an encoding here of false and true in terms of our tiling language. All right, we're going to use a sort of funny encoding of false and true here. On the inputs, we're going to use one encoding, and on the output, we're actually going to use the opposite encoding. On the inputs, we'll say an input here is false if it consists of a single L tile, like here, or true if it's covered by a pair of L tiles, like here. On the output, we'll have the opposite convention, that the output will be considered false if it's covered by a pair of L tiles, like here, 
and the output will be considered true if it's covered by a single L tile, like here. So what you can see from these four examples is that if the relationship between the inputs and the outputs here is exactly the relationship of an AND gate. And what do I mean by that? What I mean is if the two inputs here are false, then the only way to tile the rest of this shape forces the output to be false. Similarly, if one input is false and the other input is true, again, the only way to tile the rest of this shape makes it so that the output is false, and so on. In this way, starting from any circuit, you can build up a tiling computer that simulates that circuit. So here we have a tiling computer where this square here corresponds to this input A, this square here corresponds to this input B, and this L here corresponds to the output C. So remember, if we can tile this, then the output here is covered by a single L shape, and we said on the output we consider a single L shape true. So if we can tile this entire shape, it's the same as saying there are some inputs A and B that make the output of this circuit, C, true. This shows that this problem is as hard as any problem in NP, which is known as NP hard. To show that it's NP complete, remember we also have to show that the problem is in NP, which I leave as an exercise.